I'm assuming they're old cassette boxes back there, because this is a, a car from the foregone era. Squeaks the rattles. I think that might be an optional extra, I'm not too sure. Another thing to technology, good or bad, what do you think? Auto blipping on manual boxes and automatics. It makes for swifter progress, but does it not take away some of that driver involvement? Hi all, Aid from Rev Monkey here, sweltering in this early September heat in the UK. This whole feature is about new cars versus old cars. More specifically, newer, later generation sports cars versus nostalgic old classic sports cars and supercars. An example of that is here in a 512 TR, kind of the last derivative of the Testarossa family. It's a V12 front engine coupe, so it has the hallmarks of what a true, genuine Ferrari is all about. Don't forget, all Ferraris up to the early 70s were V12 front engine cars. Look at this 512TR. Now, what originally sets this car apart is the strakes on the side of the car, again, watch, funneling air through to the engine to help it breathe. It gets a very hot in the back of that. But, and that view, now you may have come across the Testarossa back in the day from Miami Vice, that was a white coupe. The Outrun model, which is a sequence of video games featuring the Testarossa, and I believe there was a convertible one as well that's being featured on that. So this might be a lot of your favorite Ferraris. As I said on the intro, it's a rare engine V12, it ticks a lot of boxes. These modern-ish looking wheels really suit the car. So you get no dark wheels in this area. It was all Rosso Corsa with a choice of creme leather or dark leather, really, with silver wheels. It's not quite that simplistic, but back in that day, it was not frowned upon, but extremely rare that you'd get a car other than this sort of spec livery. These are the side strakes we're talking about. So in the context of new cars, I mean, is there anything that really competes with this? You know, a V12 rear engine coupe. I struggle to think of it. I mean, in modern terms, not a V12, but a V10. You've got the Audi R8, but they're not V12s. I mean, V12, of course, is a, is a dying thing in this car world now. And that's one of the things that will never get back. And that's one of the things that will always remain special about cars of an older era. Yeah, to open the car door, this one, it's underneath here. Pull it towards you and there it opens. Actually, I'm quite impressed by the slidzy of that door. Quite a heavy door. Here we go. That's not the maddest seal to go over. You can see the handbrakes on the left, as you probably expect it to be on this sort of car. I've been immediately struck by actually how dark it is. I mean, a lot of people would have gone for the Kramer, um, but black of that era was still a very popular choice. It is a coupe, so you're not going to burn your ass sitting on it. Immediately struck by the simplicity of the steering wheel. The old, more old fashioned, actually, they're orange, like the yellow ones are my integrale. Really fantastic, original sort of instruments, which is always a nostalgic thing. And of course, you've got the metal gated gearbox lever. I'm assuming they're old cassette boxes back there, because this is a, a car from the foregone era. Amazing. So I'll just have a little sit in it. No, actually not too low. My first impression coming sitting in it is that these seats are bloody hot, because the sun's come through here, and I feel like I've got a heated seat on about 10 out of 10. But uh, oh, I love those, how simple are those dials? You've got the four there, the three there. But uh, really good, really good nick inside there. Even the seats are pretty damn good. But yeah, my God, it's hot in here. And I don't imagine it's got uh, anything like reasonable air conditioning. Right, old versus new, sitting inside. You've got a simple steering wheel. It's small, it's narrow, it's easy to grip. And this one's quite slanted away from you but still absolutely perfect. You've got the clear instrument, non-digital dash and dials, which adds that air of nostalgia. It's fabulously easy to see, but not distracting, which you can't be said of modern color TFT screens. Especially there's one up here, one over there as well. That's beautiful. There's nothing complicating. Think about an Aventador. It's got just a huge array of aircraft cockpit-like buttons going right down the centre and up. Everything's just far too complicated. It makes you feel claustrophobic. This car, despite being black inside, now I've sat in it, does not feel claustrophobic at all. Oh, I just closed the door. Look at that, look at that, I mean, look at that for a door. I mean, it's... <laughs> 
it's wicked. But listen to the solidity of this. Wow. So, one of the things about new and old is build quality. This is known to be quite a reliable car, relatively speaking, for Ferrari. Okay, it's going to cost more than the V8 series of cars, just with the nature of the belt need doing of the engine every couple of years, or to do a certain mileage. But, uh, yeah, that is part and parcel of the experience of owning it. But other than that, it, nothing to be really scared of. I suppose the other thing to consider with older generation cars is that somehow 99% of all cars made today have lost their sense of style, their, their sense of joie de vivre, the pure sense of joy as you approach it. This car has got angles, got things going on, sculptured wheels, the general roof line. It's, it's little details that manufacturers don't seem to do anymore. I mean, they might not do all that sort of details now due to cost savings. I, I, kind, of, I kind of get that. And here's another older car, mid-2000s in the Guiardo Coupe. But it just looks incredible. Another thing you don't see on new cars, talking about details, is a clear glass panel boot so you can see the engine on show. Now it's not as attractive as the one in the F430 or 360. And even Ferrari from then on with the 458 onwards didn't show off their engines. In the later newer Ferraris, this old versus new comparison continues on because you, there might have a glass panel there but it's half the size. You can't actually see anything because the engine's either so far low or, or shoved forward. Or of course it's a hybrid so you can't hardly see any engine anyway. Arancia Borealis, one of my favourite colours in a Lamborghini. I know the car and colour well. This is on my list. Certainly uh, this and a Superleggera with the stripe going down the side and all carbon interior and carbon bits perhaps a rear wing in carbon, uh, is right up my street. And you can find out more about the 25 cars that I'm determined to own on my YouTube channel, Rev Monkey. And there's also a spreadsheet. You can see and monitor and track my progress in the buying and selling of those cars. I think that might be an optional extra, I'm not too sure. Before we get into the technical and safety differences between new and old, let's have a look at the styles of some new and old cars and see which ones you prefer out of these two Ferraris, the California on top or old versus new Golf GTIs. I mean, look at the difference in the size of these two cars. That's how added weight and other safety features have had to size. Then you've got the classic front end, your V12, you've got TDF at the bottom worth over a million, and a 275 at top worth a lot more than that. You can see how one derives from the other. And then last but not least, the classic 911, and how that's also gained huge mass. And has the styling got worse for it? Last but not least, one of my favourite cars on my list, Corvette C1. Look at that, how pretty. So nostalgia is the best word to describe that feeling which biases a person towards all older cars. Just like that 328 GS just went past the old Vagina. Look at that. It's one of my favourite Ferraris. It's still absolute bargain. Such a pretty, pretty car. Again, we've talked about prettiness, we've talked about looks. We've talked about how very, very few cars can match the looks and styling of these older classics. Don't forget, nowadays, you're looking at modern hatchbacks being, being costing like 70 grand, which is pretty much what that car's worth. And that's unbelievable, isn't it? So nostalgia. I mean, I, I look at this and I look at the dials and all the lights, and this is probably the maddest example in a road car. Absolutely fabulous. But other people will be thinking, no, no, I want my, I want my kind of heated seats at a button. I want... Uh, my sat nav to be integrated, I've got to use a phone up here. So there are some downsides to living with an older car. I mean, the squeaks, the rattles. Now that is annoying. You're not going to get an extended service plan. Warranty is going to be harder to get hold of. You can get one after market, but it won't be the same. Petrol consumption is likely to be a lot worse. You're harming the planet with the emissions that come out of it. Generally getting the parts is going to be more difficult the older the car. Now offsetting the cost of running these older cars is that they are much less likely to depreciate. In some cases they might even go up a bit, but you, as you know, caveat, you should always not regard cars as an investment just in case. But you will see cars with a certain amount of kudos rising up over time and this integral is probably one of them and there's many Ferraris that will follow that sort of 
kind of slight low creeping up kind of line of appreciation. It's been a main drawback of an older car is just the lack of technology. Now, some people are now are, are so used to it. It's like, how could you go now from your modern iPhone or Android to one of those Nokia bricks? You probably think, oh, that's quite cool because there's a nostalgia element. However, you hardly use phones for phoning anymore. It's all about text and games and apps and websites and all that sort of thing. So immediately you prefer it. I get that. And in the same way, this car it doesn't even have a stereo, doesn't have a sat nav. It's all sorts of things that can go wrong with it. If something happens in electric wiring loom, the whole car can shut down. OK, it might be a little bit easier to work on being old school, but it's more likely to go wrong in the first place. And without a warranty, that could be expensive. I mean, you could put a head unit in here. It's got speakers, it hasn't got a head unit, very weird. You could put a head unit here, that kind of one that folds out and comes up like this, which I've seen in some older Ferraris like the Freak 6 and F430. That is uh, Android connectivity, like CarPlay, etc., and with a, and with a sat-nav, because it kind of runs and connects off your phone anyway. I mean, that's pretty cool, but it would just spoil this sort of car. This car sounds pretty damn good. You've got to concentrate when you're going at speed. You don't want a distraction of a stereo. But I can see that there is many aspects of technology that you're going to be living with and you don't want to get rid of. This hasn't got aircon. I tell you what, I don't often miss aircon. That's a simple thing. That's been around for a couple of decades. This car hasn't got it. This car's got ABS, but it hasn't got any other electricery you see in modern cars. They're there for safety. Well, excuse the fact that it's filthy, but uh, modern technology, one of the benefits from the outside is that they've got fantastic lights. I mean, <laughs> the lights I had on my Toyota Sarah, the lights on the Lancia Integrale, the lights on my 94 Carrera GT are woeful. Modern LED and neon, xenon, xenon, whatever kind of lights are much, much better, much safer. Moving on to the next external thing, which has massively changed, is uh, the fantastic brakes you get on modern sports cars. Much needed with the extra power, but still fantastic. So moving inside, uh, technology has taken a huge grasp now. We've got down here, a lot of seats now have electric motorization for ultimate in comfort, especially in the lumbar area. You've got fantastic stereos. You've got LCD digital sort of screens, TFT, whatever they're going to be called. You've got the ability to change things on the fly without being too distracted going to the left. However, having screens here and up here and all things going on and over here is actually more distracting and therefore more dangerous. So, I don't know, do you find these more distracting and annoying? Is it not better just to have the simple dials, not a lot going on? You only look at them when you need to look at something, and certainly in the Integrale, you just have to look at the dials after a, a bit warmed up to make sure everything's okay with the oil temperature and pressure. Other than that, it's good to go. One thing I do like with modern cars, which I do miss on a couple of the older ones, is uh, air conditioning. I mean, that is a massive miss. <laughs> so. I'd, uh, I love that and all older cars as well. A real boon is of course heated seats. I do like it when it's simple to touch it as it is here, not have to go into a screen. But this car you do have to go into a screen up here just slightly and then press on these for left and right. But it's all very intuitive and it's only one click away. But I still prefer them down here go click, click, click for different temperatures. Another thing to technology, good or bad, what do you think? Auto blipping on manual boxes and automatics. It makes for swifter progress, but does it not take away some of that driver involvement? Safety-wise, one thing that modern cars have over older cars is that a plethora of airbags all around you, which ultimately has to be a great idea. I mean, that sort of thing, along with all the modern technology, has added a, a massive amount of weight to cars. So the general dynamics of, of older and new cars is completely fundamentally changed. You go into any old car, even if it's a 1980s Ford Fiesta, it will just feel more alive, it will feel more live, it will feel more agile. That lightness actually makes for a better driving experience pound for pound. Another thing I do like about a daily running modern car is adaptive cruise control. Now I think that's the best single technological advance in a car if you're going to be using daily. Brilliant in traffic. Brilliant on B roads, A roads and motorways. That's a marvellous leap technology and I do get how that can change people's lives. It makes the whole experience more relaxing. But there's the rub. I, I don't like relaxing cars. I like older cars. They make you work for it. They sound different. They feel different. It's a much more emotional experience. 
In fact, it's an experience, and that is something purely lacking from newer cars. Well, on that note, I'll leave it. I'd like you to see what you think. What's an old car you love, and what's a new car, kind of derivative or version of that old car? And what do you like between the two of them? I mean, you could put up a Yaris GR against this, perhaps, and the Yaris GR beat it in nearly most places. So it really does come down to that, just how it feels, all that tangible, you obviously can't put your finger on spirit that the car evokes, but it's probably also helped by the biasness of that nostalgic feeling. All right, aid out, take care.